With all the big calls on all the big races, it's time for another What A Shout, brought to you by the Racing Post and our sponsors Bet365. Dave Orton, back with you on Friday morning somewhere in the capital, bringing you all the very best feature news with the weekend racing in mind. More Grade 1 action, of course, coming your way. Fingers crossed, Haydock passes an 8am inspection. Not sure how we got to this point but things look to be improving up at Haydock. Really good car potentially there. And of course, it is the Clarence House Chase at Ascot, which we'll be concentrating on. Get your comments in on YouTube. If you want to do so on Twitter, it's hashtag what a shout and indeed Facebook as well. Who have we got for you? Well, joining me back as ever from his Epsom home, Paul Keeley, the Racing Post top tipster. Good to have you back, Paul. Hey, Dave, you all right? Absolutely swimming along. Yeah, we're nearly getting through January, aren't we? It's been a bumpy, tough ride so far. But there's some good stuff coming our way from our sponsors, Bet365. Pat Cooney joins us as well. We'll be hearing from Pat throughout the show. And who have we got for you on the panel this week? It was a great weekend last week, wasn't it, for Tom Lacey with Adramel taking out the Leamington Grade 2. A real treat for you this week. Listen, we know it's January. It's a tough time out there in lockdown at the moment. So we thought we'd go for one of the top trainers anywhere around. Philip Hobbs, join us from Minehead. Here he is. Philip, great to have you on. Morning. Thank you very much. Philip, you started training in 1985, which which seems like a long time ago to me. I mean, I was a young boy there, Philip. But the, the, the big winners, I mean, you've had literally you've won pretty much everything, haven't you, out there? I think you've had 26 grade one winners. That's what we could count. An abundance of Cheltenham Festival winners as well. I must admit, Philip, when we knew we, that we were having you on this week, I was looking at your form and I, we were coming to Newbury and I was thinking we could do with a couple of winners on the line. Boom, bang, bang. A couple of really good winners. A quick double at Newbury this week as well. Things are going all right still. Yeah, well, well, obviously, uh, probably we have been a bit slow the last couple of months, but Newbury was definitely a lot better, so that was pleasing. Uh, 1985 is a long time ago, but it's uh, all gone very quickly, really. You've got a big team down there in Minehead, haven't you, Philip? Of course, it's, this has been the most challenging of seasons, I guess. Yes, of course. More challenging probably for for us because... As far as we're concerned, it's all gone ahead um, very well. We're very lucky to have racing on, and so hopefully that will keep going as it is. But everything at home has been working the same as normal. Um, owners can't go. They can't come to the yard. Uh, that obviously makes quite a big difference. But um, and, and obviously I'm going racing a lot less because there's no need because there's no owners there. Yeah, of course, absolutely. Let's have a look at your 26 Grade 1 winners then, uh, Philip. Lovely graphic coming up on the screen. And now, uh, according to Racing Post ratings, the best horse you've ever had, certainly from 2000 onwards, would be Captain Chris. Amazing that he's above the likes of Rooster Booster, for example. He was some horse. He would have been even better if he, did, if he wasn't better going right-handed because he always had a bad inclination to go to the right. And no matter what we did, regarding uh, treatment of all sorts, it never improved. And yet he was still good enough to win the R for which Charlton going left-handed. So he he was extremely good, yeah, very, very good. Horse. Everyone will remember Rooster Booster, of course. I, I remember that day he won the, uh, the, uh, the County Cup, Philip. That was the day uh, after a series of frustrations where he really arrived on the scene, wasn't it? Probably everyone's favourite grey out there, I think. Yeah, well, he, he was second numerous times um, the year before he won the champion hurdle um, and kept on going up in the handicap um, and then won the county hurdle, as you say, the end of that season and then was unbeaten the following season. So he was the best uh, hurdler around. But maybe we were a little bit lucky because it probably wasn't the most brilliant year for uh, top horses, but there's no such thing as an easy, easy champion hurdle anyway. He beat Rhinestone Cowboy and that's senseless, didn't he? He was the now novice everyone will remember. Of course, it's not just about the old horses. You've got some serious talents down. We've won Supreme since then. Cheltanian taking out the Cheltenham bumper, for example. But this season, we've still got some really good stuff. And Time Hill, Philip, is a horse that everyone is really beginning to love. Yeah, he's... Um, I'm... I'm relieved and pleased that he's done so well in his two runs this season because the end of last season, it was a 60-40 shout that we stayed over hurdles rather than went novice chasing. And he scored very well over fences. But, I mean, we, at least it was the right decision now, whatever happens for the rest of the season, because to have uh, run so well in those two, top two races, um, 
is is uh, great and vindicates saying saying in the three mile division. What a treat to have Philip on it is. Let's let, let's stick uh, over Time Hill for a second then. So so Philip, the rival with him and, and Paisley Park now in the Stairs Division is exactly what that needs. Where would he go next? He'll go straight to Cheltenham Festival because um, we, you know, we, we never really thought we were going to go to the Cleve Hurdle, mainly because he's never been a horse that holds condition great. We want to get him, we have a good break after Ask, get him built up a bit, get condition on him, and then and then work towards Cheltenham, which will be obviously his main target. And then we can see what we can do in the spring after that. As I mentioned, you've had an abundance of Cheltenham Festival winners. We'll get to Pat Cooney, who's got a question for you in a second. But um, Time Hill in the Albert Bartlett last year, when Richard Johnson punched the line as he went past. You're supposed to do that when you're winning on horses, not losing on horses. That was seriously frustrating. And then, of course, we saw last time Ascot, he turned the air blue. This is a horse that he doesn't feel he's quite got the best out of yet, isn't it? Well, he's won most of the races he's run in, so most times he's got the best out of him. But... Um, uh, unfortunately, Cheltenham was very unlucky. Um, Ascot wasn't so much unlucky. It was just that um, probably bit me a better horse on the day. So it's just the way it went. Well, that was a sensational finish at Ascot. Uh, uh, just quickly, Philip, what are the ideal conditions for Time Hill? What's the perfect uh, setting for him uh, in the stairs in March? I don't think it really matters, actually. I, I, um, I was going to say the perfect conditions are three miles, which he's obviously got. As far as ground's concerned, um, he goes very well on heavy and he coats well with good, so it'll be fine. Brilliant. Okay, let's bring in Paul Keeley here. Kills, what's your favourite Minehead horse then of, of Philip Hobbs over the years? What's Up Boys was one of my favourites. Uh, well, you've got loads. I did love What's Up Boys. That um, at Cold Cup was one of the most amazing races you'll ever see. Him him uh, starting off up the front then dropping way back through the field and then finishing so fast it was ridiculous. I mean, you know, I can remember the days of joint sovereignty beating the infamous Golden Freeze in the Mackerson in in 1989 but you know i was as big a fan of detroit city as i was of rooster booster i was very sad that he lost his life so early but you know you've got so many horses that just kept coming back i mean this is this is a great thing about about trainers who who've got these horses that that's just so tough you think about what's up boys you think about wishful thinking uh uh and and, and several others Munker host and remember him won a stack of decent races uh, and and you know there, there are so many my old favourites. Fair along, remember fair oh. along. He just ran every race, chases, went ran in so many different races at the festival. So there's loads to talk about. I was you know I had a massive soft spot for Detroit City, um, but Rooster. You know you know you're saying you're saying that Captain Chris was the best horse. You have to remember that chases are, are invariably rated higher than hurdlers. Uh, anyway, and and I don't think Rooster Booster got lucky. He was just a, you know, for those two seasons, I'd say a season and a half to two seasons, he was a very, very, very good horse. Remember, he only just got touched off off a massive weight uh, in the uh, Tote Gold Trophy. Now, bet for a hurdle, uh, <laughs> yeah. and that was such a painful defeat as well because he looked all over the winner. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I say Rooster Booster was the best. That that champion hurdle was a fantastic. Watch, uh, you know, when you've got a grey that you see that is so enthusiastic, almost saying, let me at him, let me at him, all the way through the race. You can't not love him, can you? We've got another grey, big, a big grey coming back out this weekend as well, in, Pol in Politolog. Defi de Soy back as well. We didn't even mention Menorah, did we? Of course, flagship Uberalis. Who is your favourite Philip Hobbs horse? Get your comments below, let us know. Right then, let's have a look at exactly what's coming up for you on this week's show. We've got the hot topic for you. Lack of Gold Cup trials, or is there? Of course, we'll be giving you the pre-grace previews as we go, culminating in the Clarence House chase at Ascot. Of course, we'll be giving you our big calls in the studio. We'll be looking at the weekend naps as well. If you want to sign up to our sponsors, Bet365, now is a great time to do so. A referral code remains out there for you when joining. Type in SHOUT365, minimum deposit of £5 for up to 100 bet credits. Terms and conditions, of course, apply. Right then, hot topic time. What a crazy news week it has been. But with Philip Hobbs on the panel, it seems remiss not to look at going for gold. Now, I guess Nicky Henderson's champ is the example we'll use for this, of course, the RSA winner, what used to be known as the RSA. He hasn't had a run this year. And Philip, it's, it's interesting that Nicky Henderson doesn't really want to run in the, him, him in the Cotswold chase. He thinks he might bottom him there. He doesn't really fancy going to the Denman chase because it's quite close to Cheltenham. But back in the day, they used to run in handicaps, these horses, didn't they? And the great Michael Dickinson, for example, used to do it all the time. Is that a trend, obviously, that's just vanished now, Philip? 
Well, I think there's quite a few things to mention here, really. Um, obviously, with any horse that's got a main target, such as Champ going to Cheltenham, you know, you, you, you want the trial to go well. Very important that happens. And you don't want the horse to have too hard a time. So therefore, you know, you'd be avoiding a handicap with 20 runners with top weight. And it's much better to be running in a six runner race where you've only got four or five to take on that are a concern. However, as you rightly say, in the past, you know, a lot of horses like Desert Orchid ran in handicaps of top weight. Arkel won the Hennessy with 12 stone seven in those days. You remember handicaps were different then because 12 stone seven was top weight. Now it's 11 stone 12. So it shouldn't be so difficult for horses top weight and handicap. But even recently, though, I mean, Denman won the Hennessy. So it has been done recently. But I suppose it's tempting to be running in a five or six runner race where you're the best horse in the race if you can. Mm, that, that is interesting, isn't it? Uh, so, 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 Kills, is there not enough Gold Cup trials, or, or should uh, you know, as Philip say, it be a more attractive option? If you remember, I think it was pre Bobsworth uh, winning uh, the Gold Cup. He hadn't run since the King George at Kempton. Now, training methods have changed, don't they? People are happy to go there fresher than ever. Yeah, I mean, look, look back back in the old days, I, I, don't, I don't know whether uh, Cheltenham was the be all and end all as it was, you know, as it is now, but. You know, even so, but there are horses who ran in handicaps the season they won their first Gold Cup. Let's say first Gold Cup because there's some dual ones here. Uh, right, they include Best Mate. They include Corto Star. Uh, and obviously, your you, you Denman, Long Run, ran in a Gold Cup. Uh, Bobsworth did. So, I mean, pl plenty of them have done it. What What's happened over the last two decades or so is there are so many more graded races than, than there used to be. So, the idea that there aren't enough Gold Cup trials is nonsense. What somebody like Nicky Henderson wants is a nice easy race at four to one on with no competition, so he can just get a run round. I mean, I'm sorry, that that shouldn't be acceptable anyway. You've got to you've got to have horse racing rather than just horse galloping. Uh, and you know, if you want to run in a if if, if you want to prepare your horse for a Gold Cup, I think you should have it match match fit match ready, uh, and and give them a proper race. Now I can understand. I'm assuming champs had a, a stack of problems. I wouldn't have been keen to have run him in in a race like the Peter Marsh on the ground that they're going to have today, but that would that could easily have been an option. Uh, so no, I mean the last thing I want to see is more graded races and less competitive racing, which is which if you start putting more Gold Cup trials in, that is exactly what you get. Perhaps time then for Gold Cup horses to start trying their hand in handicaps again. Could we be seeing one at Haydock if it's on this weekend? Racing clues then from the past week. Let's get into the mind of Paul Keeley and see what he took out, dissecting the form. Firstly, of the Leamington Novice Hurdle, then the Grade 2. Tom Lacey, we had him on the show last week, Kills. Adramel did the business. Yeah, he did the business. Got a very good ride, I thought. Um, you know, sort of stacked him up. Uh, what horse I would take out of it is the one that's come from Handicap, Mint Condition. Uh, you know, came, came from way out the back. Uh, I think he's a pretty decent animal. Uh, obviously, he was getting three pounds on a winner, but uh, there's more to come from that horse, especially. But yeah, I mean, that race is, is normally a pretty decent race, and it, and it probably still was. Yeah, I just wonder if it was, it, it was future chasers' kills that we saw there, probably. I mean, Adramel, you, you wouldn't really fancy him in an Albert Bartlett, would you? Uh, not really, no. You'd imagine, you'd imagine they'd be better. But, you know, he is tough. He's only been beaten once. Yeah, can't wait to see him over fences. Of course, then at three o'clock, we had the classic chase. Not a chance seeing over Achille. The two of them came clear. Not a chance was always up there, kills on the inside, wasn't he? And Achille ran a monstrous race. I thought he was going to be up there on the pace. He circled the entire field, looked like he was going to get there, but he bumped into one, didn't he? Yeah, he bumped into one. I think not a chance. You know, he's going to go, he's going to, go to the Scottish National afterwards. And, you know, Alan King's got a good record in that race as well. Uh, he looks fairly decent. It's funny that there was a carryover trifecta pull there, uh, and I had the first four turning for home, and LeBroy was dropping away, and I thought, this is Andy, I've got that. And, uh, of course, he comes flying through and finishes third to spoil it all. Uh, but, no, it was, it, it, it was a good race. There were other notables on the card, one of them uh, uh, rather annoyingly being Sky Pirate, of course, who I put up Andy oh. Post. But a grand annual, he has run, he's ruined his handicap mark, um, by going up another seven pounds, so <laughs> he's now eighteen pound higher than he was when I told everybody this is he should be running over two miles. 
Um, I think we, we can now confirm that he isn't the dodgepot people thought he was. He's just been running over the wrong trip all his life. But it seems that he might end up running in the Arkle, oh. uh, which is just going to do my head in because he's going to be coming up against <laughs> Shiskin. But uh, having a look at the likely runners in the Arkle, if, if Ennis Humane and um, All Mankind go, there'll be a right tear up, and that'll suit him down to the ground. I'll probably be. I'll probably back him each way on on the day. I'll probably look to bet without as well because those two would be would be ahead of him in the betting. Uh, he's a very decent horse. He'll certainly be the only horse ever to run in the Arkle two years after running a Kim Muir. That's for sure. Oh, it, it, it was a case of where does he go? The, the plethora of mm. options, wasn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Going back to the exactly. classic chase kills. I just want to. I want to take you back to that. Alan King says I don't like the national. He's not going, and neither do the owners. And after that, I thought, actually, it's not a race you associate Alan with, I suppose, is it? No, it's um, not. No. Yeah. Uh, uh, but LeBroy, lots of people jumped onto this uh, uh, sort of national bandwagon anti both. He, it, is he just one of those, though, that's always going to catch the eye now? Yeah, he might be. I mean, I mean, look, he might not be as good as everyone thought he was. You've got to remember that um, national hunt chase that he won, which was only his second win over fences, the first one coming in a match. Uh, was it came in the most brutal conditions, the most aerostream race you'd ever see. Only four finished. Only one of those four has since won a race, and that was the, that was the 125 to one fourth, who's won two Mickey Mouse Earl races in France. So it wasn't a great race. Now, obviously, he's won really well there. He stayed on strongly, uh, and you know he's clearly got ability. But he's got to run again now to get in because he's he's not going to get in off 140. Uh, and and even if he does go up in a handicap. How is he going to, you know, is he really good enough to be winning the Grand National? I don't think so. He didn't really show that much in the Beecher for me, did he? All right, that's Warwick then. Let's go to Punchestown on Sunday. They moved the top feature races to the top of the card. And Envoy LN, which was a treat to see kills, wasn't it? You know, the star of the show running in the first race. Well, you, you, you know, you know what you know what happens. You spend ages looking forward to a decent matchup, which is what this seemed to be. And then something goes wrong and it doesn't turn into it. And that's what happened when Asteria for Lons just dived at the first and came straight down. Uh, and it left Envoy Allen with, you know, an easy challenge, which is, you know, he, they just plodded round in their own time. And and when shaken up, he found enough to win. He doesn't win by miles. You know, I, it's funny. I, I went on Twitter, I said, I'm rather underwhelmed. I got dog's abuse. You can believe it. I mean, you know, he, I tell you what, if you slag off a horse, Right, you're in more trouble than if you slag off someone's mum. I tell you, like, you know what I mean. Like, so many, so many people get wound up over it. You wouldn't believe, but you know. So, but anyway, you know, he is, you know, Envoy Allen is a really, really good horse, no doubt about it. He's eleven out of eleven. Yeah, uh, he hasn't actually run in a race this season, though, has he? Yeah, you know, no. you know, we know, you know, what he's done. We know he was capable of that over hurdles. What he's done is run to a really, really high level without really coming under any sort of pressure. Um, so, you know, he's already up there with some of the best novice chasers of the past 10 or 15 years. Uh, I'd love to see him just run against some really, really decent horses, though. That's obviously going to happen at Cheltenham, isn't it? Uh, with Bet365 at the moment, he's 10 to 11. I'm a little bit surprised he's not shorter than that. And I, and I wondered, I, I, do you know what? I was slightly underwhelmed. Not just because uh, uh, Asterion fell at the f first or second or whatever it was, kills, but I, mm. I wanted to see them crack on with this horse. Do you know what I mean? I think they were trying to give him an easy ride as possible. My five-year-old son watched it with me, and he said, Dad, why? I mean, this is a five-year-old. He said, what are you moaning about? The horse just keeps winning. You know, and that's mm. obviously what people want to see. And look, he's won. Maybe I was being a bit harsh. I just wanted to see a bit more. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I did too, and you are being... Well, we are being, you know, in hindsight, being a bit harsh. I mean, at the end of the day, why... Give a horse a harder time than it needs to have. All he's got to do is win the race, yeah. which is what he's done with the minimum of fuss. Hasn't taken anything out of him. Uh, you know, it's perfect as far as trainer, jockey, uh, and his huge number of fans are concerned. And then, of course, we had the Moscow Flyer Grade Two Novice Hurdle, which has you know gone some top notches over the years. Vitor Duvan and the likes of won it for Willie Mullins. Willie Mullins came out second best though, because we're talking about winning machines. Surely the story of the season, or certainly one of them, Ronan McAnally. Not only has the jam man gone and won a Troy Town chase, coming out of absolutely nowhere, you know, heading just as he likes. This, uh, what is it, a drill deal, they call it, isn't it? I want to call it drill deal, but it, that is an absolutely amazing story, isn't it? It came from absolutely last to first. Watch it back in your members section if you've not seen it. This is a replay to watch. Can this horse have any say whatsoever, Kills, at the Shelton Festival in a Grade 1 novice? 
Well, you don't know. I mean, races won't pan out as well for him as that one did, um, because you know, Echoes in Rain just went off like a bat out of hell, and you know, they went really hard, and he was able to come from behind. Um, but he keeps on doing it, doesn't he? And he defied one of the most amazing drifts you'll ever see. Bear in mind, he was eight to one in the morning. He was tipped by price wise. He's gone up a three to two to one. And he's one going away as well. He's won pretty easily. I don't think Dennis Owen used his stick. So, you know, can't take it away from him. He is only six. And he's run to, you know, he's run to a high enough level there. Um, question marks about the form just because of how hard they went early. But can't knock the horse. Uh, I, again, watch it back. And the post-race comments uh, from McInerney were amazing, weren't they? He, he basically said, I spoke to the post on Saturday. He, he hardly eaten up. He hadn't really trained that well and all that sort of thing. And Dennis O'Regan apparently got off afterwards and said, I, I was trying to work him out for most of the race. A remarkable horse. The real deal. We've got one here in Paul Keeley. Okay, kicking off some outstanding races at Ascot this Saturday. Please let the forecast be right. It is the 150. It's the Matchbook Handicap Grade 3 Hurdle. Perhaps not the race it promised to be at the five-day entries, kills, but still it's a belter. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a really, really competitive race. I don't think it's, I don't think it's a bad race at all. It's 11 to 2 to field. Um, I do think the favourite, um, Danny Kerwin, might have a couple of dice pieces of form at Ascot, but I don't think they're brilliant by any stretch. Um, he, won a, he won a maiden hurdle here two starts ago. Got thumped in a grade two after that. Uh, I don't make him anywhere near favourite. So uh, I think likely Squeeze is you know, his joint favourite. I think he should be clear favourite. That third to not so sleepy was good in a race that he could probably have done with him going faster. He'll appreciate the, the uh, trip. But I quite like one down further down the bottom of the way. It's Paddy's motorbike. Now, this is a horse who's had a million problems in his life. He's, he's, he's had breaks of 766 days and, and 454 days. Um, and he's had four. He's had four trainers since uh, since David Evans gave him up as well. Uh, but he, you know, he came back um, from a, from that first long break to win to win on the flat off a mug of eighty five for Nigel Twist and Davis. Finished fifth in the Queen Alexandra Stakes at Ascot. Uh, only horses that beat him were already at least fifteen pound better than him. So we know he acts on the form. And he's since gone to Sam Thomas, who has really got the best out of him over hurdles because he didn't seem to be a natural herder in the past. But he's won his last two. He's run career bests. Uh, the latest on soft ground at Huntingdon. He got involved in a in a um, in quite a battle a long way out with the uh, with the fifth there called Will Sting of Lucy Wadhams, but left that one behind between the last two. That one got beaten sixteen and a half lengths in the fifth. Came out and won a handicap um, by nine and a half lengths. Went off went up thirteen pound afterwards. Uh, and I think you know a, a mark of one hundred and thirty one. You've got to remember he's ninety on the flat. He might be a nine year old, but he's ninety on the flat. And a soft ground. I think he'll go really well. Might be a bit more pace in this race than there was uh, when Not So Sleepy won here recently. Uh, and he'll be up there, but I think he'll go well. And the other one to throw in the mix is top weight Janika, who went up to a chase mark of 166 after winning the Hawken Gold Cup last year. Uh, first time out and runs in a hurdle race. Only the second time he's run over hurdles in Britain uh, off a mark of just 147. Um, it wasn't a horrific run in the Wellkill Hurdle last year when he was fourth as favourite. And like I said, he is fresh uh, and he interests me at the top two. Yeah, we're agreeing with a bit, Kills, I hate to tell you, because I think Lightly Squeeze should be the clear favourite, but I've not gone for him. And I, I think uh, that Janica might well be the danger to my selection. I like Warlord, Richard Johnson taking the ride for, to uh, for Colin Tizard. I'm hoping this will be a much much needed Saturday winner of course over Colin Tizard it's not all been plain sailing down there this season Kills has it um, Fiddler on the Roof ran well didn't he by Next Destination last week but it emerged that he bled afterwards he desperately needs his Saturday winner doesn't he? Uh, yeah he does I mean you know they've had a, a really horrible time all year haven't they um, not just for horse racing reasons so uh, you know we wish them uh, very well and I'm sure their horses will bounce back at some point yeah Absolutely. Yeah, indeed. Maybe it will be at the Cheltenham Festival where they come back in contrast to last year and give the Tizard team a big fillet. But Warlord, he's got more to offer. I don't like Danny Kerwin either, Kills. However, one man does. Uh, the one I keep coming back to really is Danny Kerwin of Paul Nichols, And this is a horse who won well over the course and distance a couple of races ago. Last time he ran, though, they stepped him up to three miles, which I, I wasn't so sure about myself. I was... I've never really thought of him as a, as a super strong stay, which he would have needed to be that day. So he was well beaten. Clearly, connections have also decided he didn't stay. He's back to his optimum trip today. And I think the version that won over the course and distance a couple of races ago is going to go very near. 
There's others in the race, of course. You look at Lightly Squeeze. He ran well in a very competitive, a similar standard type handicap here last time out. He did go up a couple of pounds for finishing third, which I always think is a bit harsh. You know, he, he couldn't win and he goes up two for finishing third. He, he ran very well, of course. So he's in the equation, but I think those two pounds might pay against him in the end. The horse that was disappointed in that very race likely squeeze running was Arriva Dirt. He was an unlucky loser at Haydock two races ago. I think he would have won handily, but he was never going from start to finish in that race. So uh, if you take out that last run, pretend it didn't happen, he's in the equation as well. But, uh, you know, I keep coming back to Danny Kerwin as being maybe being the, the safer option of them all. The next in the market are the likes of Craig Nish and Yannicka, but neither of them have run for 10 months or a year. So... The dropping trip, I think, makes me narrowly edge towards Danny Kerwin, but a hot race. So, it's Danny Kerwin for Pat Cooney. Myself and Kills will be taking him on. Right, we're off to Taunton then. Great to have them on this weekend. And it is the three mile four handicap there, which last year saw Yala Enki pretty much make all under Bryony Frost. And of course, second was Rock the Casbar. Let's go straight to Philip Hobbs then, because of course, the great horse comes out again, Philip. Uh, We've not seen him since then, have we? Well, no. Well, obviously, it was all off in the spring, and that should have been his right time because he prefers better ground. Um, I hope he'll run well on Saturday, but it's his first run for 12 months, um, and he doesn't want soft ground. So it's, it's hard by no means perfect, but at least there's only a few runners, so it's quite a nice race to bring him back uh, and to get a run into him before races in the spring. That's interesting that you say he wants better ground because he's got loads of soft ground form, isn't it? I think lots of people you know, thought that he might be one for the Welsh National or something like that. And, and the Grand National. Of course, he has run at Aintree before, Philip. He didn't really take to it, did he, when he pulled up behind a Tiger Roll when it was last run? No. Actually, he was just beginning to get into the race a bit when he got brought down. So it was unfortunate. But, um, yeah, he didn't really take to it, I don't think. I, I think if he jumped a few more fences, he might have possibly be getting into the race a bit. But anyway, it didn't happen. And I don't think we'll be going there again. Yeah, fine. Without pushing you too much for future targets, then would you be looking at maybe uh, the Bet365 Gold Cup, something like that, or or Air maybe even for him? Is his, his age would be just very happy to win any sort of race. <laughs> Fair enough. I know how you feel. Absolutely. All right, let's have a look at then what Paul Keeley thinks might just take out this race. Is this all about Yola Enki then, Kills? Uh, well, it could be. I mean, you know, he's, he's, he's much the highest rated chaser in the field. He won the race last year uh, very well from Rock the Casbah. He does have eight days less of a turnaround from running in the Welsh National, though. That's the that's the only thing. Uh, the ground at Chepstow then wasn't as deep as as expected. It certainly wasn't as deep as it was earlier this week. Uh, so might be okay. Deserved favour. I was going to say, I think Rock the Casbah probably become a little bit more versatile than than he maybe used to be. I mean, those those two runs last year, the second at Cogri uh, at Cheltenham was on soft ground, and the, and the Taunton race was on heavy ground. Uh, they're right up there with his best previous pieces of form according to racing post race rating. So he might be a little bit more versatile, but obviously having been off for a year, um, you know, if he if he isn't fully fully fit and ready, um, then he's going to struggle. And, you know, if the cap fits, his very, very talented horse just doesn't seem to have taken as well the chasing as it looked like he was going to. Uh, we'll stay on very strongly, though. Yeah, it looked that way at Kempton like he might want to test, wasn't it, Kills? But I think, I think let, let's face it, he is caught between a rock and a hard place at the moment. Let's see what Pat Cooney... Yeah, a couple of years ago, he was running in the Christmas Earl, wasn't he? On yeah. good ground at Kempton. Like, you know, now he's three and a half mile over fences on, on bottomless ground at Tournament. Yeah, on, on hurdling ratings, he could well give Yala and Kira a race, couldn't he? But uh, like I say, jury out with him a little bit at the moment. So let's see what Pat Cooney then thinks about this. I think this is pretty straightforward, really. Yala Enki won this race last year, making virtually all the running um, to beat Rock the Casbah. And he would have probably won even further, but for a blunder at the last. I could just see Bryony Frost jumping him out, Alar Frode on in the King George, making all the running, setting their own fractions. What's not love to love? He comes on the back of a very good third in the uh, the Welsh National. Ground not a problem, recent form not a problem, and very much the horse to beat on official ratings. One potential enigma in the race might be Al Rock, an ex-French horse, got a good level of French form, running for Dr. Newland for the first time. But he is a 10-year-old and he does have a £4 penalty to, to give away. I'm sure there'll be other days for him. I'll be I'll keeping an eye on him with the notebook in hand. But you look at it, don't you, you think Yala Enki, 
it's just a rock solid favourite. You know, it's not often you can tick every box with a with, with one of these uh, strong looking chase races, but uh, this fella certainly does. I could just see Bryony trapped a line making all. Okay, so Ala Enki then, if you like, Frodon, a repeat of that will be enough, says Pat Cooney. Right then, time for the big calls. Just myself and Keels doing the big calls this week. I'll tell you what, Keels, it is difficult, isn't it? Week on, week out to come up with these big calls, but we're helped often by what's led in the paper. Obviously, our hot topic this week, Lee Motta said piece on Monday, but David Carr came out with a piece, didn't he, saying, congratulations, Ascot, it's about time he went to seven races. He also made a strong case for Cheltenham doing so as well. Yeah, he did. And it got what you could only say the predictable uh, response from people on Twitter saying, no, don't mess with the festival. Uh, you know, it's all you know, it's all about commercial. You're ruining it. You're dumbing it down. And, and I half agree. Uh, but I would say, you know, why not have five days as long as if the races they add, which they'll have to do, do not add a single graded race. You can put more handicaps on and you just, you, you know, if, you, if your argument, the David Carr's argument was, um, you know, this would be absolutely fantastic for turnover, for levy, uh, et cetera, for money, for racing, uh, and for owners who will have more uh, opportunities, then fine. Put a stack of handicaps on uh, and put the novice chase back for a start, the novice <laughs> handicap chase back for a start. Uh, but but don't dilute the graded races any further than they've been diluted. That would be a real, real backward step. I mean, you know, you know, we'll end up having a two-and-a-half-mile grade one hurdle uh, between the champion hurdle and the stairs hurdle, etc. They do that, they completely ruin it. What Ascot have done is they've just added handicaps that, that, that there was space for, and they will not take a single horse out of any of the main races. Do you think it's inevitable, Kills, that we'll go to a Saturday five day? Or do you think it's just it's just bound to happen? I think it, I think it'll happen one day. There's enough people calling for it. Um, you know, the Cheltenham will fill whatever day uh, you want to run the races on. Uh, and obviously, turnover wise will be a lot greater uh, the more people that can watch it. So yeah, it'll happen at some point. Uh, they keep saying no, we're not looking at it yet, but one day it'll happen. What are your thoughts then? Should it should it come back to three days? I know a lot of you thought just love that whirlwind that was three days, but it kills has got a point, hasn't it? And why take races away? Add to it. Absolutely. It's inevitable, guys, we think. Let, you know, let us know your feedback down below. I'm going to switch tack. I want to look at the all-weather. There's a young jockey that's riding out there at the moment. If you don't know her name, her name is Laura Pearson. She's attached to the Richard Farhee Yard. She's claiming seven at the moment. It won't last by the time we get to all-weather championship day. She is a seven-pound claimer going somewhere. Also, I'm going to give you the winner of the Stayers race on all-weather championship finals day. That's right. I watch a load of all-weather racing. You probably saw on Sky, didn't you? Um, a really good uh, Stayers race in the week and Rainbow Dreamer just got touched off under Tom Marquand. Unbelievable ride by Joe Fanning on the winner. I don't know if you saw that kills, did you? That race? Sorry, mate, I was asleep. You're talking about all weather. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a hospital pass for me, wasn't it? But Rainbow Dreamer, he got turned over and I'll tell you what, Mildenberger, his old rival, won't turn him over on Champions Day. I'm looking forward to the prices coming out with Pat Cooney for that one. Ascot then, the big bit 365 sponsored race is the uh, staying handicap there over fences. What a field we have. And um, let's go straight to Philip again because Jerry's back, comes back. And again, loves this place. Hasn't been seen since finishing second, of course, to Regal Encore at the course last year. Yeah, well, again, he's had a long time off. He's a big gross horse. Um, uh, might need a run a bit, might need a bit further. So, look, I hope you run well, but... Um, uh, we'll, we'll see how we get on, but I, th I think there might be more improvement after tomorrow. He's a horse that absolutely does love the hock deep ground, though, Philip, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, he coached well with that. That's not a problem. Yeah. Mm, okay, all right, Kills. Uh, what do you th I like the look of in here? I thought Windsor Avenue was the one person. I thought that, that Roland Merrick form still looks pretty hot to me, back down in trip. I think this might be his big day. What about yourself? Uh, it does. I was disappointed with my back to the time before that when he, when he um, pulled up in the... Uh, uh, in, in, in the um, Caspian Caviar Gold Cup. Um, not 100% certain about him in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a big field. That would uh, worry me. His winds have been over fences, have been all, all in small fields and over hurdles, really. So, uh, yeah, that, that bothers me. Uh, I'll keep coming back to Espoir de Guy, uh, a Venetian Williams. She's obviously been in cracking form lately. Uh, and, you know, he made a, you know, he, he's another one that goes very well here. One here, first time out uh, this season, having. Um, 
won uh, last season as well, though, in, in December, been winning by 10 lengths then. Uh, back at Ascot last time, he was a heavy ground three mile, and I think Charlie Dodge was doing his best to try and uh, conserve his stamina, and he, he, he lost his ground down the back straight without being asked to, to pick up. When he did pick up, he'd moved into a, a third or fourth into the straight, but it was clearly knackered. Didn't stay. He's better than that. Uh, back at this trip, I think that's what he wants. Uh, and for me, he's the one that will take the world to beat in, in what is obviously a very competitive race. You're a more forgiving man than I am, Kills. I can tell you that much. Let's see what Pat Cooney reckons then about this feature race. Well, as sponsors of the Bet365 Handicap Chase, we're obviously thrilled to get 14 runners. And it does look a real tough race to crack. I mean, we've got two recent winners of the uh, the running of this race. Acting Lass, who won it a few years ago. Demand de Lille. Uh, he, he comes back to defend the title that he won last year. Both of them have been a bit out of sorts, so I, th I think we can, uh, we, we'd be surprised if they were involved at the business end again. I think the market would steer more towards other more likely horses with decent recent form to their name. Benny's King is top weight. I mean, he won well enough last time. He was beaten in this race a year ago, uh, so he's solid. You look at good boy Bobby, he's solid as well. Dashiell Drasher, I think, is an interesting runner in the race. He's uh, he, he won OK here last time out and he jumped very well. He has probably been the best back horse uh, since we put the prices out on Monday afternoon. Impossible, really. They've all got pretty much decent, strong form, particularly over the course. I do feel at some point in his career, Windsor Avenue is going to win a race like this. He probably found three miles a little bit too far last time. Two and a half miles form is solid. He travels well. He's got Brian Hughes aboard. Two miles, five, soft ground, that that, that could suit. I, I, I've ended up fancying Windsor Avenue again for a handicap chase, but um, I, th I think maybe this time he can do it. Yep, Windsor Avenue then, two ticks, although Kills, he's given another chance to a Venetia horse. 3.35, grade one action, it is the Clarence House chase. And we've got last year's winner in the race. Although coming into it as a hot favourite last year, Philip, of course, you saw off under so... Lovely ride that uh, from Barry Geraghty, wasn't it? All smooth. It has not been plain sailing with him this season, though. No, well, his first run of the season at Cheltenham was uh, disappointing. He jumped the first very big, then he travelled well and jumped well, stopped very quickly. We've done all the tests in the world since then and have found essentially nothing wrong with him. Um, and he seems in very good form. Uh, all the work at home has gone well recently, so... Uh, we hope you're on very well tomorrow. Do you remember his uh, his chasing debut, Philip, at, at Cheltenham a, a couple of Novembers ago? He looked like he, he didn't like the fences at all. And then, of course, he went to Exeter. We know that the horse can bounce back. He's done it. He's, I guess as a French uh, juvenile that you had, he's done remarkably well to go as far as he has. Yeah, he's, well, he's done brilliant since then. As you say, there's been one or two little hiccups along the way, probably. But, um, uh, I mean, obviously, Obviously, as we all know, at his very best, he's he's extremely good. Like when he won the Clarence House last season on the Tingle Creek. So we hope he's back to that form. Yeah, he's a, something of a forgotten horse, which is a remarkable thing, isn't it? So last year's winner kills. Can he get the better of the uh, of the searing grey uh, politologue? We know what he's going to do. Of course, uh, he'll have Harry Cobden back on, probably go from the front. We've got waiting patiently in there as well. Where's the kills radar going? Well, I mean, you know, Deffy can obviously win if he comes back to last year's form. I mean, you know, he won the Tingle Creek and he won this race very easily on the strength of which he went off two to five for the uh, champion chase. And and that's when, unfortunately, uh, for whatever reason, um, it went pear-shaped. I couldn't personally back him after the two runs, he's, well, after, after the run he's had this season, definitely. Um, but you would not rule him. You would not rule him out. He's obviously very, very good horse, and uh, uh, he's still, you know, he's officially only one pound below Politologue now. Um, and Politologue, you know, he's won those two races, but the Champion Chase from Dynamite Dollars, the the uh, Tingle Creek from Green Green Team. Um, you're not talking about really, really deep com contest when you look at what he's beat. So, you know, although he's a deserved short price favourite, I don't think he's unbeatable. Uh, I've taken a chance on waiting patiently. Um, hopefully he didn't have too hard a race in the King George. I don't think he did because they didn't go fast and it wasn't a real test of stamina. And when he ran in the Tingle Creek last year, um, you know, on, on his on his sole run, uh, sorry, in 2019, he, he was third. He was five or six lengths down jumping the last and it nearly got to them. Uh, and you've got to remember that Sandown, is, it's, it's, less than two, it's less than two miles, whereas this race is going to be two mile, one furlong. Uh, because there's about an extra 50-odd yards added. 
Um, that will suit him down to the ground, as will the ground. And, you know, he, he actually um, tugged like mad in the Tingle Creek a couple of seasons ago. So he's got no problem with the pace. And as long as the King George hasn't bottomed him on his first run for ages, I think it'll go very well. Mm, there's some definite pace on, isn't there? Waiting patiently. This could be the acid test for him, because he turned out quickly. Absolutely fantastic to see. Pat Cooney, what do you make of this? Yeah, this is going to be a cracking betting race, of course. With the eight runners, it really opens it up from the each-way angle. And, of course, I don't want it to happen, but if Defi de Salle does put in another below-par performance, there's going to be a horse at a double-figure price being the first three. First flow may be that horse, but he hasn't jumped particularly well in both the handicap wins so far this season, but he does love the testing ground. I was hoping Fanny on de Struvo would stick to handicap, so I think that one's interesting, Venetia Williams throwing that one's hat into the ring in this grade one. He was an unlucky loser at Newbury. But, you know, it's hard to get away from the front three. Waiting patiently will be my idea of the winner. I just think the race sets up ever so well for him. I could see Brian Hughes just sitting off a fast run race. And, of course, we know he's got the class. Stamina's not going to be an issue. And he's got the ground conditions in his favour. The last time we saw him was an honourable run in the King George on Boxing Day. That was a good effort. Dropping down in trip doesn't seem to phase him. He just travels so well throughout his races. I would prefer to be on waiting patiently. But, of course, huge respect to Politolo. But eight runners, hopefully there'll be eight. And that will really open things up from an each-way angle. But waiting patiently... I think this is his time. I think he can win this one. Waiting patiently again for Pat then. Mm, okay, it's going to be a fascinating race. Defi Desoy, be lovely to see him bounce back, wouldn't it? Right then, delighted to say we're still in the running for Haydock on Saturday. Kills on Thursday when they announced that 8 a.m. inspection, the way it's been going, you thought there were a million to be on, didn't you? Well, I mean, on Wednesday, it was waterlogged. They announced they'd have an inspection at 8 a.m. on Thursday. They then had 35 mil, and on Thursday, it wasn't waterlogged. Uh, quite amazing. No wonder Kirk and Tell, I called it a minor miracle. What we do know is it will be the deepest Haydock ground we've had for a long while, and they've had some really deep ground there, haven't we? This will be, you know, circa um, Bristol Demise first bet fair chase win, I think. Uh, you know, when he won, or second bet fair chase win, when he won by an absolute mile. This will be really, really deep, and it will certainly separate uh, those that don't handle it from those that do. Well, on the assumption it's on, let's do a wrap then of the best races. I, I, I want to go to the Peter Marsh first, kills because Royal Pagai is out after that absolute procession at Kempton on on uh, the 27th, where he beat Cap Du Nord, who's going to be a leading player for the Sky Bet at Doncaster next week. This is also gone up to a mark of 160. You know a little bit about this horse, kills. We won't go on too much about that, but this is a potential a Gold Cup runner. As we mentioned at the top of the show, it's him trying his luck in handicap company. Well, he was entered in the Gold Cup uh, after winning at Kempton. I mean, obviously, he, he, he absolutely cruised on day, that day in the 22-length third double shuffle has won back at Kempton since. It, it's still a massive step up. He was off a mark 140. Then he's got to win this off 156. Um, but he was put in there, you know, it might be because there were concerns about no Irish horses coming over. And obviously, it's a, a Susanna and Rich Ritchie owned horse and could potentially have been their only runner there. But And, and it would have been a weak Gold Cup. But... But he is a horse that is improving rapidly, and he does have, although he's a novice, so he has he has the four miler you'd assume as the other option because the RSA they've got monkfish in there. Um, he could go the novice route, but he ran a lot in a lot of chases in France, so he's had he's had ten chase starts, so he's got the experience. He's going to have to win this. He's going to have to win it quite well. Um, he might well do. Uh, the ground, you know, I'm told can't be soft enough for, for him. Uh, and you know, I think he's the one. I think he's the one to beat. But he is a nine to four shot, and I can't say that I'll be, you know, falling over myself to have a bet at those sort of odds. Although I have backed him non-run and no bet for the Gold Cup. Yes, you have. I saw you put that up in your weekend of piece. Absolutely. So I mean, you've got. Are you tipping against him? Uh, I'm not tipping against him. No, I, 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 I'm happy to go and see him win. I'd like to see him win. I, I, I'm just not, you know. Whip, I don't think I'm going to be playing too much at Haydock at all, given the ground. We'll certainly see what it's like after the first race. But, uh, you know, I'm not, in a, I'm not in a rush to play because we know that it's going to be an unholy bog out there. Yeah, but he won't mind the ground, will he, Kills? We were talking uh, before we came he on air. Had, what uh, was the line you gave me? I was on the Joe Chambers racing manager and he said yeah, he's related to several tractors. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> We've never heard that one before. He'll be ploughing on through. I thought if there was an alternative, maybe it's a Tommy Whittle winner. Sam's Adventure, who won that despite racing lately throughout. Sam Brown is in there. He's quite interesting, isn't he? One on the card and the novice chase, I think. If it does go on kills, we've got, uh, hopefully, a Bouvardere making that belated comeback in the new one hurdle. I mean, uh, is uh, how do we treat him this weekend? Yeah, it's difficult. I mean, you know, I was having, I was having a look at some stats and, and for a start, like hurdlers in Britain who return from uh, more, a year or more off, I've got a 5.3% 5, 5 strike rate or something, uh, you know, which is ridiculously low. I mean, but for Nicky Henderson, it's 40%, which is a lot lower than, than his normal strike rate. But then again, very few will have come back with his class edge and his advantage at the weights. Uh, he's, mm. you know, he got dropped four pound for the race in which he he finished with that big stick of wood sticking out of his hoof. So he's down to one six three, but he's, that still makes him six pound the best in the race, and he's getting six off off the second best, which is Bally Andy. Trainer said he was absolutely amazing and unreal in an away day gallop. So, you know, they're they're very positive. I think he'll win. I hope he'll win. Let's just hope he comes back safe and sound. So look, fingers crossed, Haydock's on. We're going to have a treat, albeit in the mud, if it is. Time to bring in the guys at MyRacing.com then. They're each way double this weekend. What's it going to be? 150. The seriously competitive handicap. They like Nordano for Neil King. He's got some track form come down the weights. And in the three o'clock, he won it a couple of years ago, acting last. They think he'll take it out for Harry Fry. Time as you've been waiting for, for the weekend winners. Let's give Pat Cooney the floor. Yeah, the first race at Navan for me, the 12.50, and it's No Meads horse, the Devil's Coachman horse, who won his bumper last year, one run, one win. Came out and impressed me, really, when he won a maiden hurdle on the heavy ground on his seasonal reappearance. That was a good, strong effort, I thought. I thought, this is a horse that's going places. No Mead and the connections. He's owned by J.P. McManus, remember. Clearly think he's a, he's a decent horse as well. Because in his next race, he stepped right up into a grade one company, and he was fifth and nine. He was beaten a long enough way, but far from disgraced uh, by the good horse Appreciate It, who's a, a leading contender, of course, at the Cheltenham Festival. This is a big, big step down in, in uh, company for him on Saturday. I think he'll find life a lot easier. I think the Navan track will suit him. It's a, it's a tough track. And he's, I think he's a horse that's got stamina as well as speed. And I think he'll have just about the class to put the others to bed in this race here. So the Devil's Coachman in the opener in Ireland. Lovely. Devil's Coachman then. Uh, to bounce back for Noel Mead, J.P. McManus. And, of course, on an Irish race. Lovely to give the show a bit of longevity. Keels, you're looking at Ascot on Saturday, though. Uh, yeah, I do like the, I do like the look of Esprit Gee coming back down in trip for the 3 o'clock at Ascot. But keep an eye also at Haydock in the 205 for the chaser going back over hurdles, Chef Derve, who loves heavy ground, loves Haydock, and was 10 to 1 in a place uh, earlier on in the day, and I think should be half that. Okay, so now, and an next best with Paul Keeley for you. Hey, Doc Song, great stuff. In the 150 at Ascot, I am really keen on Warlord. He just ticks every single box for me, Dickie Johnson, on. There's a trio for you then, a treble, if you like, for the weekend winners. Right then, that's it then. This week's What a Shout, myself, David Orton, signing off. Thank you for joining. Thanks, Philip Hobbs, for coming on. It's been great to have you on, Philip. 2021 then, uh, uh, the year ahead. Just before you go, Philip, uh, I want to touch on um, that Dostal Phil that won at Newbury. On Wednesday, it was this week. He looks like a horse, Philip, that could well take out a big prize over fences. A, you must have been uh, delighted with that. The Racing Post week uh, gave him was 147, I think. The handicapper's not going to give him that. I hope not. No, I, mean, I noticed the racing post racing was very high. Yeah, um, yeah, delighted with him because obviously he hasn't run for a long time. Um, he jumped very well, a little bit big to start with, which is a good mistake for a, for a novice or a good fault for a novice. And um, yeah, he won well, so uh, he's very much looked forward to uh, for the spring. 1,655 winners we counted here on What a Shout since the turn of the century, Philip. We're hoping you add to that this weekend. And Deffy Desoy, fingers crossed, he comes out and we see him at Cheltenham in March. And uh, let's hope we see you there, Philip, uh, and, and then we get some more people back in. Thank you. Thanks to Philip Bobs. And thanks, Keels, for joining us again from your luxurious pad all the way in Epsom. 
Yeah, yes, yes. I'm looking forward to it. Another weekend down the pub. Oh, oh no, I won't. Uh, not until uh, April at the very least. So, yeah, no, sit at home watching the telly. You are looking a little bit more svelte, though, Kills, as the, as the weeks go on. I'll give you that. Thank you oh, for well, watching. I'm making an effort. Yeah, you are. Absolutely. We're all making an effort, mate. Absolutely. Uh, well, exactly. Uh, yeah. some, some of us might perhaps need to make a little bit more. OK, d thank you for watching again. Enjoy the spot this week. Don't forget to download the Must Have Racing Post app. You can do that on the App Store or indeed the Google Play Store. Indeed, safe gambling. Again, that's our MO here on What A Shout. Do gamble responsibly. Get your comments in as well as we're going throughout the weekend. We love to read the feedback. Mm -hmm.